Hey there and welcome on back. As always, I'm Carl with Targets of the Attitude. Absent my professor knives and all things sharp. So I'm back, grab some pens and paper, class is about to begin. Today, it's Monday. Labor Day, as a matter of fact, so happy Labor Day to you. But since it's Monday, that means it's knife basics, which you really need to know. Today, we're talking about knife steels. Yes, knife steel. What's the best knife steel out there? What's the best one to make your knife out of? Well, it's not as simple as it may sound. Matter of fact, I may get yelled at by a few people when this video is over. But before we get too far into it, let's go ahead and get the syllabus work out of the way first, shall we? If you're new here, welcome. Here on Mondays, we do knife basics, which you really need to know. We're aimed this series more at uh, the people who are new to knives, though it does cover some stuff that uh, might do as a brush up for those who have been in the knife field for a while. Um, basically, we're trying to get you to the point where when you go to a knife shop or to a knife show and you start asking the vendor about various knives, you're not sitting there going, um, okay, uh, what did he say? What does that mean? Um, I'll see you 200 N are you, what the basically it's going to get you to the point where you actually understand what they're saying instead of just sitting there going um uh okay for those of you who have been around for a while welcome back just got one question for you and yes you know what it is have these scribed yet okay so you have and you have you have and you have and Wow, there's a couple people over there in France. Hey, I've even got someone over in Russia. Amazing. And of course, we've got a couple people down there in Australia as well. Doing great. Yeah, just wait a minute. Okay, you. No, not you. You. They're in New Mexico. What are you doing? Come on, man. It's so simple. And it's a win-win situation. You'll do yourself a favor. Just hit that button right down there that says subscribe. Then they hit the bell next to it. That way you get notified every time I put up a neat new video. As I say, it's a win-win situation that's going to do us both favors. You, because you don't miss any of the videos I put out. Me, because, let's be honest, the more subscribers I have, the easier it is to get all these neat new things. But... Enough about beating a dead horse. Just do your job. Subscribe, okay? In the meantime, on for the rest of us. So, start talking knife steel, and it can get very overwhelming very quickly. I mean, 8CR13 MOV, AUS8, AUS9 or 10, 01, A2, 154CM. CPM 154, which is an entirely different steel. Um, CPM S35VN, S110V, uh, Elamax. It's an alphabet soup out there. What does it all mean? Well, each steel is a little different. Uh, if you look at it in terms of baking, it's like the difference between a... Uh, Standard apple pie, a uh, Dutch apple pie, or a peach cobbler. It's most of the basic ingredients are the same. It's how you put it together um, and the amounts you use that make up the difference. So, which one makes the best? I really need to look at a couple different factors here. Um, because, quite frankly, each knife is different, each task is different, and it's going to affect things. There's edge retention. How well does the knife hold edge? How often do you have to resharpen it? There is strength, um, which is related to edge retention. You've got toughness. There is a difference between strength and toughness. Um, a strong blade is going to hold an edge great 
but it might not uh, work well when you're trying to do something else. Um, toughness is now it's more like a tough blade is less likely to chip or break on you when you're using it in high impact type uses such as batoning, um, torsion. It's great for uh, very tough steel is great for camping and other hard uses. Um, think of it this way. Um, you get, and yes, I know I'm saying um a lot, but take the difference between someone who is a martial artist and someone who is a bodybuilder. The guy who's a bodybuilder is going to be a lot stronger than the martial artist, probably. Unless the martial artist is also a bodybuilder at the same time. And even then, you never know. So, the bodybuilder, if he can get his hands on the martial artist, is going to pound the crap out of him. But, if he's got his glass jaw, or is not used to fighting, the martial artist is going to be able to anticipate his moves and write him out until he either wears himself out or he gets an opening to take advantage of that glass chin. The martial artist is just a lot tougher. He's not stronger, but he's tougher. Same thing with knife steel. Some are stronger, keeps the edge better. Some are tougher. Another example would be uh, the difference between a sprinter and a marathon runner. The sprinter is going to cover things a lot faster, get the job done right away. A marathon runner is going to keep on going, and keep on going, and keep on going. And he's not going to get the job done as f anywhere near as fast. But he's going to be able to do a lot more. Again, same thing with knives. Another thing to look at is corrosion resistance. Um, okay, 1095 is a good, tough steel. It is an old steel. It's been around for a while. It's high carbon. It's going to, it has a decent amount of edge retention. It's tough as all get out. But when you get right down to it, the two main ingredients in there is iron and carbon. Maybe a little bit of sulfur because you can't get rid of the sulfur when you're trying to get iron or carbon. Um, might be a few other impurities in there. But most of the time they're there by accident, not because someone put them there and... So, you've got a super tough blade, but it'll rust if you look at it cross-eyed. See my video on rusting. Um, or you get, but then you've got ones like uh, LS200N, I think. Let me double check the name of that, just to make sure I'm telling, got it right. Um, no, LC200N, I'm sorry. This steel is one of the premium steels, so the knife is going to cost a lot more. But they replaced a lot of the carbon in the steel with nitrogen, which takes a very special process that we couldn't do um, even two decades ago. But as a result, you've got a knife steel that performs almost like a hard carbon steel. But the nitrogen keeps the blade from corroding. So if you're willing to pay the money for it, um, LC200N is going to give you a knife that is just, it's fantastic for people like sailors or saltwater fishermen, um, people who live near the coast. It's just not going to corrode. But it's expensive because it's hard to make. Um, 
So there's that. HCR-13-OV has a reasonable level of corrosion resistance. So not as anywhere near as high as LC-200N, but it's still got fairly high amount. VG-10 is the same way. Um, 420HC, which is one of Buck's favorite of steels is very good at corrosion resistance but none of them are quite as tough as 1095 so yeah then you've got ease of sharpening and this is something a lot of people don't think about but this is kind of a uh, two-edged sword here uh, some of your super steels will hold an edge forever but once they finally dull, and let's be honest, every knife is going to dull sooner or later. Um, it's just that with super steels, it's much later. But they are going to dull eventually. So when you go to sharpen them, um, the very things that makes them keep an edge so well can really work against you in sharpening it. Um... I did a sharpening guy, job for a guy who had a bunch of high-end knives made with super steels. And the guy was a good sharpener. He sharpened all of his blades until he got these knives in. And he had always done a really great job. But he couldn't get a decent edge on these super steels. So he came to me. I could do it because I had the proper equipment. Um, it's Still took more time, but I could do it. He didn't have the proper equipment, and he didn't have the patience. So, how good are you at sharpening? Um, or are you going to send it out to be sharpened all the time? It's an important question. Um, if it's too hard, it's too hard. It makes sharpening it just a royal pain in the rear. <clears throat> and that's not the only thing you need. Those are the four biggies. That's not the only things to look at. Um, other considerations you might want to take in. Uh, actually, you do need to take in. Probably the most important one, and this really overrides almost anything, is the heat treat. If a knife has been properly heat treated, all you've got is a metal stick. A nice looking metal stick, but a metal stick. Um, your heat treatment changes the properties of the blade. It determines the strength of the blade, the toughness of the blade, um, edge strength, uh, ability to work at various jobs. It's just someone who has is really skilled with heat treating is going to turn out a better knife than someone who has very little experience with heat treating and that's why uh, he can get more money for his knives um i'm still teaching myself a lot about heat treating i know the basics i know the theory behind it i just don't have the experience yet so, for me to work with super metals, I blow the heat treatment and I've just wasted uh, $100 worth of steel if I'm buying uh, super steels. If I'm working with uh, 440C, which is a good knife steel, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, or 1095, and I blow the heat treat. Well, I have a chance that I might be able to correct it. And even if I can't correct it, it's... At worst, I've thrown away maybe 3 to $5 worth of metal. Big difference there. Another thing to consider. Blade geometry. Um, this is huge. This is related to grinds in a way. But if you stop and think of it, it makes sense. Some 
knife that has a thin, narrow blade is going to slice much nicer than something with a thick blade. Which is why you never use a butcher's knife or a chef knife if you're trying to take the skin off of a piece of salmon. You go and get yourself a flay knife, which a very thin blade that quite often flexes nicely and is sharpened down to, say, a 17 degree angle. Maybe if you're working with a sushi knife, a 15 degree angle. As opposed to the 20 to 22 degree angle of the chef knife or butcher's knife. If you're slicing meat, a chef knife or butcher's knife is going to do a lot better job than, say, a camp knife with a quarter inch thick spine. Because it's got enough hef and meat behind the edge to make slicing easy, but it's still fairly thin, so it doesn't, what you're trying to slice doesn't hang up on the blade. On the other hand, if you're uh, out camping or hiking and you need to um, put a point on a stick to uh, go frog gigging or feather up a p piece of wood f to help start your fire, um, chop some wood to replace a broken tent, uh, pole, all these sorts of things. A camp knife with a quarter inch thick spine is going to have the heft and weight behind it. Do all these materials and the toughness to get it done. Um, especially if it's 1095. You'll want to Oil it when you're done and clean it properly, but 1095 is just one of the toughest steels out there, which is why it's still used so much. You try using a fillet knife for all that, and God help your fillet knife. I uh, hope you can afford to replace it. So, yeah, it's, and it's not just flay knives. Um, Spyderco Chaparral is an example of a knife with a very thin edge and slices through things great, but it's not uh, not going to stand up to some of the tougher uh, jobs out there. And of course, sharpening. Um, if the knife has been sharpened to someone who really knows what they're doing, the edge is going to last a little longer and is going to do a better job than if it's sharpened by someone who's just learning. Of course, don't take that as meaning you shouldn't sharpen your own knives. <clears throat> I firmly believe everyone should learn how to sharpen knives. And good Lord, well, the crick don't rise, I'll do a video on sharpening here in a little bit. But today we're talking about knife steels. So... What's the takeaway of all this? Notice I haven't really mentioned types of steels that often. The reason I didn't is because all these other factors really play into how the knife performs. And as you can guess from what I've said, choosing the right knife for the right task is incredibly important too. Um, say you're an electrician, you're going to want a tougher knife so that you can cut through the wires without causing your knife to chip, but you're still going to want a good edge on it so they can strip the wires easily. So you're not going to want a really thin knife like, say, a Spyderco Chaparral. But you're also not going to want something along the lines of, say, um, oh, the Frontier 
line from Schrade. Frontier line is a great camping knife. Um, I really like them, but it's not going to do an electrician a lot of good. For an electrician, you're going to want something more along the lines of maybe, um, if it's a folding knife, maybe D2 or 01, uh, 1095 would not be a bad choice. Some of the other ones, um, Sandvik series is, are great, like 14C, 28N, um, VG10. These are going to give you a good um, compromise between edge retention and toughness without going into the expense of, say, S35VN or S110V and definitely better than the Almax because well Almax is one of those super steels that it's going to hold an edge it's got superior toughness uh, superior corrosion resistance but if you can find a blade made with Almax steel for under $250, I'm going to be shocked because I don't know of any. Uh, if it's that cheap, I don't think it's really Alamex. So, yeah, there are great ch charts out there that will you can look up to uh, find out all sorts of things about knives and their. Uh, various steels. A really good one is over at Blade HQ and quite frankly if I could come up with my own without out and out copying theirs I'm probably going to be putting one up on my own website. Um, I just don't want a, it to be an out and out uh, copy of theirs. That just that would feel wrong. So, yeah, I'll put a link to uh, Blade HQ's this chart down below. And when I get my own finished up and posted, I'll post a link to that too. But, yeah, it's... If you're new to the knife world, though, knowing knife steels is great, but knowing the task you're going to be using it for and knowing the reputation of the person who makes the knife counts for a whole lot more. If you're trying to use a camp knife to uh, flay a fish, uh, you're going to have a hacked up piece of fish. On the other hand, if you use a flay knife to try to cut firewood, You're not even going to cut one piece before you have to place the knife. So, yeah. Admittedly, I haven't answered exactly which knife steel is the best. That's because there isn't any one knife steel that's the best. You're looking at a compromise. Question is, what is the best compromise for you? What's going to do your job the best? So go ahead, check out the chart there at Blade HQ and at my website once I've got it finished. Um, it'll help quite a bit. As I say, knowing the job and knowing of the guy who made the knife, it's going to help more. So, but in the meantime, drag this on a little bit longer than I meant to and I do need to Get some laundry done. I've got to go to my day job later on today, so got to have a clean uniform for that, of course. <coughs> and I'm trying to lose my voice again. So, I wish you luck. I'll leave you with a couple videos over here that I think you'll enjoy. Of course, you can always hit that target right there to subscribe. Take care. And remember, if you're going to do something, no matter how minor or how major, do it with attitude. See ya.